The following is a Stars and Strikes doubles rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present Stars and Strikes Doubles. Stars and Strikes Doubles is sponsored in part by Somerville Lumber. Strikes Doubles is produced and conducted with the New Hampshire Hamilton Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to Stars and Strikes Doubles here on WNDS TV 50. Doug Brown, as always, along with Dan Murphy. And uh, for those of you who might not have found us last week in our first week of the new season here in our brand new time slot, Welcome to the late afternoon edition of Stars and Strikes Doubles, and uh, now we're in week two of our first four-week series, and boy, we had a terrific match to start the season last week. Absolutely. Uh, Dan Broder and Mike Poulin just hung on that third game. Mike threw a big strike in the last frame, and uh, we didn't, it wasn't decided until the last frame of the match. All right, let's meet our bowlers for this week's show. Of course, uh, the guys we were just talking about are back to try and make it two wins in a row. They're our number five seeded team, and they won a very close match by four pins last week from Bow, New Hampshire, Dan Broder, and his partner from Hudson, New Hampshire, Mike Poulin. Okay, Dan comes in averaging 120, has a, a roll-off score of 674. Mike Poulin, on the other hand, 127, and his roll-off score very close at 673. And it was interesting last week because we had the, the pairing of the two guys, Dan Broder and Mike Poulin, who really are the more veteran team against the two guys who are kind of newcomers to Candlepin Bowling, and it turned out to be a terrific match. It certainly did, and this week uh, we've got a veteran and a first-timer with us. All right, let's meet the uh, third-seeded team, and this, of course, will be the two guys that uh, will oppose Dan and Mike as they look for their second straight win. Our number three-seeded team from Norwell, Massachusetts, making his first appearance on Stars and Strikes, Bob Whitcomb, and his partner from Quincy, Mass., Jack Sanick. Okay, uh, and Bob comes in averaging 121, his roll-off score 684, and Jack Sanick averaging 125 and a roll-off score of 681. Well, we've got, uh, obviously, prize money at stake here. Of course, the winners of this match move on to our semifinal match. That'll be next Sunday afternoon at 5 o'clock. But uh, we've got lots of ground to cover before that. We'll have our three strings of doubles competition. It'll be Mike Poulin and Dan Broder against Bob Whitcomb and Jack Sanick, and we'll get the match started right after these words. Don't go away. All right, last week, in case you missed it, uh, our number five seeded team, Dan Broder and Mike Poulin, with a very exciting four pin victory, 377 to 373, over Wayne Denon and Peter Pereira. So they now jump up to face our number three seeded team this week. The winners of this match will face Neil Goslin and Francis Bolio next week. And uh, in the final match, two weeks from today, Paul St. Pierre and Steve Reno will be here to try and defend that number one spot. But uh, right now, Dan Broder is going to lead things off for the team of Broder and Poulin here on lane 30. And again, for those of you who were not here last week, we are at our brand new home for Stars and Strikes doubles, the Londonderry Bowling Center in Londonderry, New Hampshire. And a little later on, we'll give you some information about our next taping session for Stars and Strikes doubles, if you'd like to join us. We'd love to see it. Dan opens with a seven. Dan, I don't think, was real happy, uh, Dan Broder, that is, with some of his results during last week's show. Uh, no. Um, they were real comfortable the first game. I think they kind of split the marks in the first game. Opened up with a great 149, I believe it was. And uh, 
he felt it was all downhill from there. They really struggled the second and, and really the third game. But a win is a win. And a seven and an eight for Dan Broder to start the match. And now our first look at a newcomer to the program, Bob Whitcomb. Bob finished fifth in the roll-off with a 684. And uh, as a result of that fifth place finish, he was teamed with the number six place finisher, which of course was Jack Sanic, who was just three pins behind him at 681. Again, the, uh, the bowlers compete as individuals in the roll-off and then uh, are paired up afterwards. That was a very quick look at uh, Dottie Lark, our official scorer here at Londonderry. Oh, and there's a spare for Bob Whitcomb. I wasn't sure he had enough angle on that piece of wood to carry the 10 pin, but he did. On the spare now on lane 29 and punching through the middle, taking out the one, two, and the eight. Just the three fill. Gonna go for the cluster of five in the right hand corner and see if he gets something to happen. Pretty good effort. Ooh, he almost cut that over. That was the seven and the nine. And he almost cut the nine pin over. A nine box and a seven pin lead for the team of Whitcomb and Sanic. And now here's Mike Poulin. Again, it was Mike Poulin who threw the big strike in the last frame of that match last week to help his team to victory. Starting out much like uh, Wayne Denon and Pete Pereira did last week on that lane 30, going right through the middle off the head pin. Whoa, 787 so far. The making of a pretty good hand in cribbage, but. Or a phone number. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But for what he's here for, he wants, that's a little better. A little better pinfall. Leaves just a seven pin. He's gotta be careful for that double piece of wood angled in the channel, and as a result, he pulled it a little bit too much to the right. Can't help but think that would give him a little trouble. He didn't want to come in contact with the wood before he hit the pin. Picked it clean that time, but it's only a 10. 32 through four. Our first look at Jack Sanic, or at least first look today. He's been with us several times. Of course, uh, Jack is the son of Hall of Famer Mike Sanic. Four horsemen left. Outside or inside. Spare in the third for Jack Sanic. This time he hits the head pin on the right hand side. Domino effect into the two and four and finally the seven. Jack Sanic's only appearance with us last year was on Stars and Strikes Doubles back in March. He was teamed with Ron Willette and they lost a match to Dan Broder and Larry Valcourt. Four fill for Jack. Well, they're going up. Spare three, now spare four. Both times they're on the head pin. And an eight box for Jack. So 12 pins, the difference after the first four. Dan Broder again now. Well, he tripped that four pin out of there. Gives him a good shot of the spare lead in the three, six, 10, however, has a piece of wood in between the three and the six, which is going to throw the three pin right to the right side wall in a hurry. Ooh. Yeah. Might have seen uh, just hidden behind Dan Broder before that shot. Uh, Mike Poulin stood up and took a, lock, a look at it. He wanted to kind of get a look and see what the setup was like for his teammate. Let's take a look at what happened. Wow. The ball right in front, one of the pins in back. 
a little different start so far this week for the team of Broder and Poole. Well, it's going to shoot at the 10 pin, looking for their first mark. There it is. Spare in the sixth. Bob Whitcomb now. From Norwell, Mass. Works at Purity Supreme. Two, four, six, uh, two, four, seven, the three and the nine. Bob is pretty tall, but he, uh, pretty good technique, it seems. He gets down low and uh, uses that crossover, cross lane delivery from right to left. Right on the head pin that time. He wanted that seven pin out of there. The three, six, and 10 concentrates on those three. Very good chance of jumping the three pin over. Oh, Just that's like a great that. shot. As you're talking about the technique right there, that was a terrific, terrific shot right there. Wood didn't even have to be there. I think if people at home are watching and they, they think, well, I've got to try to cut the three pin. I think your first objective is, is to grab the three pins and hopefully you'll hit it to the right of the three pin and have the three pin take the seven. And again, the fill on the marks plague both teams. Mike Poulin fills that mark of Dan Broders with three. And almost converts it leaving the six pin. Ten box for Mike. Mike's going to just go after the five pin, hopefully on the left-hand side, and mm. miss it by much. In fact, you can see the nine pin, a little bit of wobble in it. Ooh, <laughs> almost converted the nine and the 10. So it continues to be a struggle for Mike Poulin and Dan Broder here in this first game. They trail by eight plus whatever Jack Sanic throws on this spare left by his partner. And he too is on the low side of the fills. We've had four marks, two with a three, one with a four fill, and now one with a five fill. And Jack still got five up there. Takes out nine, leaves the lead at 12 through seven. Jack from Quincy, Mass. Works for State Street Bank as a division comptroller. Does a lot of his bowling at the Wallex in Waltham. That was a good looking ball, the five nine. That wood will stay out of Jack's way. And he's all over it for the spare. Fourth mark, all spares for the team of Whitcomb and Sanic. Broder and Poulin have had just one. Well, one, three, and seven left for Dan. He missed it the first time, and then it came over off the sidewall. I said, oh, it's a tough break, because the head pin just misses the seven pin right there. But the three pin comes back and does the job for him anyway, spare in the ninth. Needs a big fill. And again, we've yet to have a fill over five. Possibilities here with the wood behind the two pin. This time wow. he won't carry the seven pin. So it'll be a uh, 
sub-100 opening game for the team of Broder and Poulin. Even with two marks, it'll be a 97. Well, that's the bad news. The good news is that uh, the team of Whitcomb and Sanic aren't setting the world on fire either, at least up to this point. They have a mark in the eighth, though. And Bob Whitcomb will fill that. There's something more than a five, and he wants the 10 pin to go, but it's not going to happen. Seven is him 93 through eight. And a 20 pin lead, at least for now. Okay. Well, I think you almost have to play the wood. Right with the two meet, oh, he's going down low. Hmm. I would have tried to play, shoot almost right for the 10 pin and catch the, the tip of the wood in the red line in front of the 10 pin. There, might be. We'll never know. 103 through 9 and a 15 pin advantage for Bob Woodcomb and Jack Sanek. Oh, big first ball that time. The 5 and the 8, and everything else is into the pit. Got it. It's right on it. And that should get a lead over 20 with the mark here in the 10th. It's 16 right now with one ball to come. And it's, well, it looked like it would be better than it turned out. Only six, looked like a pretty good pocket hit. 119 for the team of Whitcomb and Sanic. 97 for the team of Broder and Poulin. The lead is 22. That's game one. We've got two more to go here on Stars and Strikes Doubles when we return. Jack Sanek will lead things off here in game two. Leading by 22. So Dan Broder and Mike Poulin find themselves in the predicament that they put the team of Pereira and Denon last week. Not quite as bad. They were up by 39. Wow. Oh, How did Jack, the five pin stay up? Jack thought he had that. He started to walk away, I think, like he and had it. Jack, you and I, and the rest of the crowd thought he had it. Instead, it's a 10. Can't put it on the scoreboard until it's down. I had to bowl one of those games sometimes. I should have had it game. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hit that. I should have had that. <laughs> Good oh, effort. Let's see. The seven and the nine pins remain. And it's a nine box. 19 through two games. Just beginning the second game. Mike Poulin now, the left-hander. Mike has the highest average of the four bowlers this week. Been around a long time. Been in a lot of the uh, international competitions, the team competitions. As has Dan Broder, his partner. Spare up for Mike Poulin to start off this second game. The third mark for the team. We've yet to see a strike in this match. Wow. Right through the middle, three fill. I should mention also that uh, Mike's partner, Dan Broder, is one half, the better half, of the <laughs> New Hampshire State doubles champions. Uh, the other half sitting right here beside me, Dan Murphy. <laughs> oh. No, you knew you shouldn't have said uh, that. No, you, you're sharp for the first <laughs> week. That's a hanging curveball. You know? <laughs> so I usually could uh, even the score up, but you're throwing them fast and furious at me. It's going to take me until December to even the score up. Bob Whitcomb now. Again, a 
Disappointing fill on that mark for Mike Poole and only a three. The team has had three marks and they filled them with three, five, and three. A little off target for Bob that time to the right. Bob, Bob does a lot of his bowling at the Hanson AA in Hanson, Mass. Every once in a while we run across someone who bowls at a bowling center that we aren't real familiar with, but I guess everybody will know about them now now that we've given them some free publicity. Over to lane 29 now for Bob Whitcomb. The winners of this match, of course, move into our semifinal week. That'll be next Sunday. And here on Stars and Strikes Doubles at 5 o'clock next Sunday afternoon, the winners of this match will face our number two seeds, Neil Gosselin from Lynn, Mass., and Francis Bullio from Ocean Park, Maine. Bob hangs up a spare in the fourth. That's mark number six for the team of Sanic and Whitcomb. We have yet to see a spare fill of more than seven in this match, and we've had nine marks to this point. Well, let's go out on the limb, and I I'll say we'll have a mark with more than seven on it. <laughs> Dan's gonna look at the three, five, and nine. With maybe a piece of helping wood uh, nestling with the three pin. Well, maybe it'll help. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna help too much now. Still gonna almost come up on top of it, right at the cap. Ooh. Well, that's tough to do, what Dan just did. He took out the five and the nine and completely missed the three pin. Gives you an idea of how much room there is down there on the pin deck. It doesn't look like much when you're standing up on the foul line, but there's a lot of room down there. Okay, not bad. Not bad, a bad break there. Uh, missing the head pin leaves just the one and the three. This would be a nice one to go to a break in. Probably regroup. No, he's going to be too far to the right. Well, last year, uh, last week rather, the two teams were firing strikes all over the place. We had a total of nine strikes in the match last week. And we're almost at the halfway point here today, and we've yet to see our first strike. And so far, the team of Whitcomb and Sanic with the lead, and they'll be working on a mark when we come back. Don't go away. Once again, Jack Sanic, And Jack steps up working on the mark left by his partner, Bob Whitcomb. And there's a fill more than seven, seven and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Jack was happy to see that 10 pin go over. This is two and the eight left, and he's got some help in between. Yeah, Catches the two pin, I'd say uh, he's yeah, gonna have two in a row. Doesn't look like too difficult a shot. Oh my. Oh. Well. Did I, did I say that? Uh, Right. I knew that was going to be trouble. That's why you never say things like that. That's right. Boy, that looked like a sure thing. I, I just don't know how it stood up. Let's let's take a look. Maybe it, maybe it'll second go this piece time. of wood. That nope. was it. It was yeah, the second, second piece, piece of wood, of wood caused yeah. it. I thought maybe the replay would make it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, big ball that time for Jack. Leaves a solid six pin. Jack saying, "Boy, that would have been a nice film." Or maybe Bob would come saying that. <laughs> Bears it up. Mark number seven for the team. Neither team has been able to put marks back to back yet in this match. Mike Poulin is off to the right. Mike Poulin finished 10th in the roll off. He was the final qualifier. Top 10, of course. Reached the program and uh, Mike did so with a 673, and just one pin ahead of him was his partner, Dan Broder, 674. Probably don't have to tell most of the people at home now how to qualify for the show. Most of you know by now, but just call your nearest NHCBA house and find out when they're having the semifinal roll-offs. And uh, if you're actually, not to interrupt them, but sure. it's actually a good thing for us to keep talking about from time to time uh, because still I. I often get questions about it, and uh, 
and people say, well, do you have to be on the pro tour or do you have to be a, a pro bowler to get on the show? And I, so it's a good idea to, yeah, don't even, to keep reminding people to. You don't even have to be a league bowler. That's right. Really. It's open to everybody. All you have to do is find out when the NACBA house nearest you is holding the roll off, or maybe the one furthest away from you. It doesn't make any difference. <laughs> you feel like a nice drive? Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. And uh, just find out when they have the roll off. If you're in the top five, you'll be told where to go to the finals. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, depending on what show we're taping, or roll off is for, if it's a singles, top five of that roll off will go on the show. And if it's a doubles, it will be the top ten. All you're paying for is the number of strings that you bowl. There's no entry fee. And while I'm talking, I'm forgetting the score. So a three fill and an eight. Thank you, Don. Another, another disappointing fill on a spare for the team of Whitcomb and Sanic. And right through the middle. Well, last week you made your one mistake, and I just made mine one mistake, so we're free and clear the rest of the season. That's right. <laughs> see a part of the fine crowd that is gathered here for this taping of Stars and Strikes doubles and a nice 10 box for Bob Whitcomb. And uh, speaking of that, we'd like you to be a part of a taping session here at the Londonderry Bowling Center. And our next taping session will be on Sunday, November 8th, three weeks from today. So if you're anywhere in the area, Londonderry Bowling Center is just off exit four from Route 93 in Londonderry, New Hampshire. Follow Route 102 West. It's maybe a half a mile or so down on the right. We'd love to see you. Again, it'll be on Sunday, November 8th. We'll start at about 10 in the morning and go till 4.30, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And that was a... Uh, a back-to-back -back spare on the nine drop for Dan Broder. The first back-to-back -back marks we've had, and then look at that, a one fill. I was just going to say, he broke the ice with a, a nice nine fill on the spare. That one, he dropped the ball almost right on the foul line, skipped a little bit on him to the right, and took out just the three pin. Good recovery, though. That was the strike yes. ball, and he gets the spare out of it. Wow. <laughs> Light hit there, and just a matter of whether or not the 10 pin would go, and it did. Back for Jack Sanic now. Jack's going to try to split the two and the four, but as I said, concentrate on the three pins. Ooh. This match is going to tighten up a little. 95 through 9. Jack right back on the head pin again, and this time it'll be the 5, 8, 9, and 10. Uh, well, we don't want to say anything for sure, but it appears that if you can just sweep it over left to right, like that, it'll go. <laughs> 105 with a bonus ball to come, and there you see him play the wood effectively to the left of the 5 pin. Sweep everything to the right. Back on the head pin again, and it'll be a nine drop to end the string at a 114. And a two string total, 233 for the team of Sanic and Whitcomb. That uh, may or, well, it may be good enough to hold the lead. It would probably take some strikes for Mike Poulin to overcome that. He'd have to. Mike can make it an awful lot closer, though, but yep. he can fill this and put up one or two more of his own. But he's not going to fill it. Well, at least not with a big fill. Five. Still looking for our first strike of the match. Not very often that we go this deep into a show without a strike. It does happen from time to time. That's 102 in the ninth. As you can see, the team of Broder and Poulin has picked up seven. To cut into that lead, it's now at 15. But remember, Mike is working against a spare nine here in the 10th. He's got a chance of a spare of his own. The three and the five pins are left. And Mike should be concentrating on the three pin. 
Missed the three pin, chances of making it. Very slim, he converts. Now he needs at least the nine to keep the lead at 15. Hits the head pin again, but only five pins to show for it. 117 for Broder and Poulin, a two game total of 214. And they trail the team of Jack Sanek and Bob Whitcomb by 19 pins. We have the third game coming up to decide this match. Don't go away. Here's a look at Mike Poulin. He'll get things started here in game three. And he's going to have to start quick, down by 19. And neither team has been exceptionally sharp so far in the match. Mike was not happy at all with that ball. He kind of turned away, almost makes it a spare. Runners up in this match will share $200 in prize money for fourth place. Winners, of course, move on. Francis Bullia and Neil Goslin, the number two seeded team awaiting the winners of this match. Mike is waiting for that piece of wood to settle, although it should not affect his shot. I think it is distracting him a little bit. It keeps moving. This is one of those matches where a single pin now could be very important later on, so. Right now he needs some marks. Ooh, well, he actually caught the a break there. He really did with that wood coming back in between the two and the three. He's got to catch some of the two, but I don't know if he, if he catches the two, he'll twist the wood. Yeah, just uh, got to get a little more of the two pin, drive the wood straight back. He's himself the eight pin and the 10 pin left. But no mark. 19 opening pair for Mike Poulin. Shaking his head as he comes back to the bench. Jack Sanek now. Ooh, a thin hit and this will be an adventure. The two, seven, eight and 10. No man has treaded before. Good try, <laughs> though. Almost cut the two pin fine enough. Been a shame if he got the two into the ten and just left the eight pin. So they lose one in count. Lead now 18. The first strike of the match? Not quite. No, not. As close as we've come to one. Leaves the four pin. Got to be careful not to cap the wood. Ooh. Oh, you my. Get the wood. Ooh. We'll skip that one a little bit, cause it to go to the right. Well, that's a big break for Poulin and Broder because the lead would have gone over 20 had uh, Jack been able to put that mark up on the board. They're still within striking distance. They're probably two marks away. The difference is 18 right now. More likely three marks away, but. <laughs> the way the fills have been going in this that's match. That's exactly uh, what I was thinking about. Could be. <laughs> Ooh, boy, light hit there. And the ball was going away in the one, two pocket. Cluster of five, three, five, six, nine, ten, but also the seven pin and no wood now to help. Still the seven and ten up there for Dan. Do they have Bob Whitcomb, Jack Sanic in some, but time is going to become a factor here in a minute. Down to seven frames remaining. The two teams so far have combined for 15 marks, all spares. Where? Oh, the wood was coming. <laughs> it was coming. I thought we had our first strike. Had a rock across the plate and then fell into the pit area. Leaves just the five pin. He's going to be covering that for a spare. 
Well, perhaps that will get something started as the team of Broder and Pullen try and come from behind. Each team now with eight spares in the match. Bob Whitcomb kicks out a back pin, leaving the one, two, four. Wood all over the plate. And he kicks it out. A little extra body English there. Let's carry the four pin. It's one of those matches where the pins just don't seem There's to want to go strike. down, but there is our first strike. Bob Whitcomb with authority. Strike on spare as we go out to a break. The team of Whitcomb and Sanek trying to add to their lead. We'll see if they can hang on here when we come back. Well, Mike Poulin steps up now working on a mark, and he needs not only a good fill, but probably another mark or two on top of that. Right. They've got to start stringing him now, because down by 29. Oh, oh I'll my. tell you. Three and four is the word today on spares. Two, four on the left. Three, six, nine, ten on the right. Mike had to go for it. And now he's going to try and escape. He'll take an eight. And Broder and Poulin now down to their final five boxes, and they may need at least five marks here. Well, there's one. Their first strike. Well, maybe they're due for strikes, and maybe they're going to come together. I think I'm sure that Bob Whitcomb and Jack Sanek are thinking the same thing. And Jack already has one up that his partner put there. And now he's bowling in the fifth looking for a double. But he got a double all right. A three and a nine. Did he make it? No, the five pin. Great try by Jack. But the important nine fill on the strike helps the cause. They're opposite of. You get a mistake on the scoreboard here. Right, that should be an eight, four, an eight, eight in the uh, fifth right. box for Broder and Poulin. That's a critical mark right there for Jack Sanek in the sixth, opposite the strike that Mike Poulin left up there. Scoreboard is corrected now. You can stop screaming and hollering at home. <laughs> We've got it. <laughs> Dan's off to the left. And he's working on a strike, remember, so he's got to come up with a shot here to at least get a good fill. Playing it inside, it'll take a five fill on the strike. And a nice nine box, but it's going to take some big numbers here late for the team of Broder and Poulin to put their second consecutive win on the board here. Definitely have to mark out and probably have a couple strikes in a row. Pretty good effort. No mark to show for it. A nice 10 for Dan, 84 through eight, but Bob Whitcomb may be able to put the uh, final touches on this. Then you look at Dan's 10 box, but it's all gonna be too late, it appears. Bob Whitcomb working on the spare that Jack left. It's a seven fill and may have to have that pin checked in front, although it looks like it is in play, but it's right dead in the way <laughs> of the object pin, which is the two. Gonna, looks like it's gonna be out. Wow. I'm, just gonna... I'm surprised. 
Usually you can tell by the way the light shines on the pins when they're in front like that. But it'll be a clear shot now on the 258 for Bob Whitcomb. And he's got it. Big spare. That may just about do it right there. That's 12 marks for the team now. Oh, yes. Wow. Big nine. And Dottie doesn't know it yet, but she's going to be making another trip. <laughs> As we've got a piece of wood coming back this way, this one will definitely be out of play. About a quarter of the way up the lane. Dottie's getting more camera time than you and I this week. I know. Bob on the single pin for a spare. Oh, he's all over it. That's three marks in a row for the team. In the match. Now, the lead up over 50 right now. Mike Poulin to shoot at the 1789. And that close. Next week, team of Neil Goslin and Francis Bolio coming in. And uh, I haven't heard it officially, unofficially, though. I understand that Neil Goslin threw a 210 in the roll off. You are absolutely correct, sir. I have it right here in my notes. It's not Mike Poole and Dan Broder's day today. It's unusual to see two guys struggling like this. I mean, it, they have each had trouble. And it continues right to the final box. It's a nine, a 103, and a 317 for the team of Mike Poulin and Dan Broder. And that will not be enough. Bob Whitcomb and Jack Sanek have already won it. Jack Sanek filling it out now and a little upset with himself throwing a four on the spare. But in terms of the match, he's just finishing it out right now. Their final score will be up in the 370 range. Depending on what Jack does in the 10th, 126. And Jack will have a spare leave. Up high in the wood, though. It's a tough piece of wood out in front, but he carries it anyways. Those always seem to go when the match isn't in jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> Everything seems to go. Mark number 14 for the team. 13 spares and one strike. That one strike, though, came at a real big time. It came in the fourth box of this third game just when it looked like Mike Poulin and Dan Broder might be able to put a comeback together, but instead, it is Bob Whitcomb and Jack Sanek knocking off our champions from last week with a third game, 141, and a three-string total, 374. We'll be back to chat with the bowlers in a minute. Welcome back to the Londonderry Bowling Center. Doug Brown, Dan Murphy will join me again shortly. Let's uh, chat briefly with our runners up in this program, Dan Broder and Mike Poulin, who I'm sure are just real anxious to come on up here and tell us how it all happened here on this particular program. First of all, first of all, let me, let me, yeah, before we talk about it, let me give you your checks first. Uh, we are going to give you the checks, in fact. Thank you very much. And uh, just, it was just one of the, we were talking about it uh, on the air, just one of those times when just neither one of you were able to get anything going. It's a sprint format. You, you just got to yeah. hope you come yeah. out of the gate, and you don't really have time to adjust. If you start splitting like this, it's what are you going to do? But they made a lot of good shots. They had a lot of dry shots they made. We got beat by a better team. Simple as that. Any uh, Anything you can add to that? Yeah, I uh, kept bowling bad from last week and took him with me this time. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can add. Well, obviously, any time you're coming up from that number five spot, uh, you know it's going to be tough. And, yeah. uh, and obviously, this uh, still leaves you plenty of time to try and join us again uh, oh, yeah. at some time later on in the season. So we hope to see you again real soon. Yeah. Thanks very much. I'd like to see what our average was in our first ball, about three maybe. <laughs> we'll go back and check it and get back <laughs> to it. It could be a record. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Dan. Thank we you. appreciate it. Now let's bring up our victors from this week, Jack Sanek and Bob Whitcomb, putting it together and uh, 
getting that score up to 374. Congratulations, guys. Uh, it, it was kind of a struggle for both teams, really, at times, but you guys were able to put it together. Well, I think out of the four of us, Bob bowled very well. I mean, I got up and through. Like Mike was saying, three and fours, it seemed like, <laughs> on all the spears, and then this alley, 30, ripped me off on two of them. But, uh, you know, Bob came through. He, he got us going at four marks the last string, which helped out a lot, and, you know, hopefully I can help out next week. I was going to say, Bob, uh, your first appearance here on TV50, you must be pretty happy with the way things went. Yeah, it was very good. It was pretty cool, but Jack kept me calm down and stuff. I was a little nervous <laughs> in the first couple of boxes, but Jack said it's calm down, have fun, and go from there. So did you have a good time? Yes, I did. All right, and so I'll... I guess that means you'll come back next yeah, week. I'll come back next week. All right. Let's we'll try this a couple more we'll times. Wait, yeah, we've got, uh, we've got a team waiting for you next week. Uh, Neil Goslin will be here along with uh, Francis Bolia. We'll be looking for uh, for you guys to come back, and yeah, and uh, obviously this will be the semifinal match. The winner of that one goes on to the final, so we'll be looking for you two guys next week. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, All right, sir. Jack Sanek and Bob Whitcomb, and uh, let's bring Dan Murphy back in here and take a look at the uh, ladder for uh, next week because we've got, uh, of course, that second place team coming in, uh, uh, one from Maine, the other from uh, Massachusetts, and uh, they're going to try and knock off Jack Sanek and Bob Whitcomb, who, who put it together here when they had to, kind of late in the match. Yeah, they, uh, that was a decent score, and that would win a lot of matches. And uh, now not only thinking about the second seeded team, we're also start thinking about the qualification of the Tournament of Champions for a double show. All right, we're going to join you next Sunday afternoon at 5 p.m. here at the Londonderry Bowling Center. It'll be week three, semifinal week here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole TV50 Sports crew, I'm Doug Brown. We'll see you next week.